Hi there, welcome to Shopcast number 42. This is one is all about our new silk. I'm going to tilt this down. These don't lift particularly well. Um, so <laughs> these are many of the colors that we have in the silk. We have a bunch still coming in, including this wonderful oceany, bluey, greeny color that I'm going to be making a shirt out of. Um, but that also includes most of the bolder colors were unfortunately on back order. But we have a bunch of neutrals. We have fascinating things like hot bubblegum pink some really beautiful golds, and a whole bunch of different shades of greys and greens oh, and a little tiny turquoise right now. And it's fantastic and fun and a burgundy <laughs> and some details about it. It is, um, it's from Habu and Habu is actually related to a Japanese company in Japan. They're called Avril. When I went there a few years ago, I went to the store in Tokyo on our very first day. And then I went to the store in Kyoto when we went to Kyoto. And then on my last day, I went back to the one in Tokyo because I needed more of this yarn. It's, it's fascinating stuff. So this stuff is 100% silk. It is 402 meters for 19.95. Uh, Care is dry cleaner hand wash. And this is a super, super fine lace weight. I'm gonna put all the cones down. Now with more crashing. And show you this fantastic shawl Francesca's daughter, not Zoe who owns the store, but the other one. I've just forgotten her name. Yeah, I'm sorry, Francesca's other daughter. It'll probably come back to me in about five minutes after I turn off the recording button. But she made this very fantastic and lovely, awesome shawl. This is Ishbel, but it is kind of fine and gossamer light. But still, the silk is a very nice insulator, so it would do a good job of trapping heat around one's neckline if one wanted to. So this one took, uh, I believe it was a little bit more than a cone. I can double check and have some notes in the Facebook page about the post afterwards. But there's a little tiny bit left over, and I made a sample. But one of the cool things about this yarn is its ability to be worked together, either with itself doing multiple strands or adding to something else for a little bit more textured interest. So down here at the bottom, I was holding four strands together and using a one, two, three, four, five, five millimeter needle. Really? I thought it was a six. Oh, no, it's a five and a half. <laughs> Here's a little hint about making coded swatches. So my needle size, there's five bumps and another five bumps. So that means it's a 5.5. This section was three strands held together and that's just five. This section was two strands together. And I think that was one of four. Yep, four. And this one was on a 3.25. You see, so there's three pearls and two pearls and then five pearls. And then the garter stitches were still done on the 3.25. And then I tried some on a two and that nearly killed me because man, those are teeny tiny needles. But it makes a very solid fabric. So if you have any reason to get a firm silk fabric, you could. And then up here, I was holding it doubled with Kid Silk Haze, and this is really lovely. So that's on a four millimeter. Here I was holding it with Kid Silk Haze and with the um, Drops Alpaca on a five and a half. And then this was just held with Drops Alpaca alone, and it was on a one, two, three, four. And it's really cool fabric, isn't it? So I'll turn it sideways so you can see all of that in one place. So from thick and heavy, and so this is kind of like an Aran weight uh, worsted. Mm, I would call that a sport kind of for that. And then this, you know, treated as a fingering, it'll still be um, quite kind of gauzy and see-through. So a lot of you who have been making things like the featherweight car cardigan and I want to say whisper cardigan, where you are using Malabrigo lace on a larger needle, you could be using the silk in the same way. I think out of all of this, my favorite is the one that's combined with the kid silk haze. Uh, it does in this, in this particular case, the color of the Kid Silk Haze was close enough to the color of the silk that it does blend in very well, but it is definitely brighter than the silk on its own would be, but the feel of it is incredible. I also really like the way it looks with the Drops Alpaca. So you get this tweedy effect, but it'll never pool the way some of the hand-painted yarns do, and it's just, again, a really nice hand. So things to know about silk. Silk comes from worms unless it is specifically labeled as a um, piece of silk. And I'm, I'm gonna check the labels on this just for one sec. Da, 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 da. It does not say. Okay, so many types of silk that you get. The cocoon actually has the silkworm still in it when it gets processed and becomes yarn. So um, be, if you are a vegan, 
I would say let's hold off on, on getting into the silk yarn until I can confirm whether it's wild silk where the cocoons are actually in a place where the silkworms are allowed to go through their metamorphosis and chew their way out and then fly off as moths. Um, what the chewing does, it makes all the strands of silk small because instead of being this one single strand that wound an entire cocoon, it's become, um, okay, you pulled off that layer and then it got chomped and then you pulled off that a little bit and then it got chomped. So you have a whole bunch of little tiny strands. I'm somewhat inclined to think this is probably named that way or from silkworms that have chomped their way out just because it is a slubby silk. It's not one of the super high fine sheeny silks, but I don't want to guarantee anything if this is something that doesn't kind of sit well with you in your uh, ways to treat animals nicely. Just hold off until I do confirm on Facebook or on Twitter whether or not this is a peaceful sort of silk production. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you, this is another cool thing you can do. So this is two strands of charcoal gray. I'll show you the combs. Two strands of charcoal gray held with one strand of the very, very solid black so I like the charcoal gray and wanted it a little bit darker, and this is achieving exactly what I was looking for. This is a cuff to become a mitten, and we're going to find out if my sweetie Chris watches my podcast or not, because if he doesn't, these will be a surprise for him, hopefully before he goes off to a trip to Toronto. But if he does, hey sweetie, I'm going to try and get them done for you. <laughs> um, I'm really enjoying it. These are a four millimeter needle. This is garter stitch. This is going to be the cuff. And then I'm going to pick stitches up all the way around the cuff and go up and make a mitten, probably with some sort of a functionality that he can get his fingers out and use his phone. I don't have any conductor thread, but that would have been cool too. Um, one of the things we really like about this silk is just it's so happy being worked in multiples. And what you can do is play with options. Um, when I was in Japan, I picked up five different colors of this. I haven't been able to track it down at home because my craft area is a little bit of a chaotic mess right now. It will get better. But what I did was I had red and gold and amber and green and blue, and I started out with three strands of red, and then I left a strand of red and picked up one of the strands of orange, and then I dropped it down to red, and then I had two oranges and one red, and then three oranges, and then three oranges and one yellow, and then two oranges and one yellow, and then two yellows, and I just did this ombre effect all the way through a pillow cushion. It's really nice, and this lets you play that way if you want, or you can add this for a little bit more color, a little bit more luxury, if you want, or you can work with it on its own and make something wonderful light and delicate and lacy, like Ishbel. And I will have uh, links at the end of the video to the Ravelry website where you can see all the other fascinating things people are making with this yarn. You can also go to Habu's website directly and see what they're making. Their photos aren't quite as good as what you'll probably find on Ravelry, but it's interesting anyway. And if you've ever heard of the other yarn that they make, it's a stainless steel yarn that gets wrapped in either wool or silk. Kind of fascinating stuff. Maybe if a lot of you ask for it, Francesca might bring it in. She'll probably kill me for putting this on the podcast. It, it's neat stuff. And this is like, if we had interest, it might come and join the silk to come and play at the store. But in the meantime, come and take a look at our silk. It's wonderful and lovely. We've also been restocking a bunch of our other yarns after the winter sale. And pretty soon we'll be having our summer stock coming in. More linen and more hemp. It'll be lovely. Hope you come by soon and say hello. I'll talk to you later. Bye.